<laughs> How does this intro have anything to do with game dev? Okay guys, I did a game gym, the GMTK one, where a bunch of people came together and had only 4 days to make a game. Now, I've made a bunch of games for gems before, so I've got a pretty good idea of what I'm doing, but at the same time, I really don't know what I'm doing. The theme for the jam was announced on Friday morning when the jam started. The theme was built to scale. I grabbed some paper and tried coming up with ideas, and after maybe about an hour of thinking, I came up with something that I really liked. My idea was a game where you play as a lemon with kitchen knives, and you use those knives to slice not lemons, but limes. Then you can like, consume the lime's juices, become really thick, and use their juice to fly around. It's just like when you squeeze a lemon in real life. But if you use too much juice, you become small and have no more juice left. I might be a food addict, I don't really know, but a decent chunk of my games are food. Anyway, I threw my ideas onto Milano and created a new Godot project. And the first thing that I did in that project was make a yellow ball that will be the player. I wrote some thrust code for the lemon, so when you use the mouse, you can thrust the player all around over the place. But it didn't feel good. It felt terrible. So I went back to redesigning the game and came up with an idea where you use the keyboard to tilt the player instead of the mouse. And I'm not really sure what happened, but somehow I've already spent like 10 hours on this game. I felt like I didn't get a lot done, but it's fine. I've still got like three days left. Okay, I woke up the next day, and the first thing I did was adding that tilting idea with the keyboard. I also changed the rigid body so that it's a character body for a little more control. I wanted to try something a little different for the art style and kind of make it look like it was drawn on paper. My main inspiration for this was this Bluey episode where Bluey's mom and dad tried to escape. Probably my favorite part about this art style though is that you get to draw outside the lines. The player actually looks kind of like a lemon and looks like everything else I've drawn in life. You guys know how we're using character bodies for the player? Well, it doesn't really feel physics based. And if you know me, I like physics. So I went back to using rigid bodies instead, which took me like an hour to change, but it's, it's all good. We still didn't have that thick lemon mechanic though, and that's a big part of the game. My brain felt like it was cooked and it took me longer than I would have liked. It was starting to get late though, so I went to bed. When I woke up the next morning, my brain was going to arms and legs. The lemons didn't have those right now. I wanted to do something a little different from all my other games though. I wanted to make rope arms so that I could use the rope arms to like make these sick animations. I borrowed some code from my game Child Hammer for the rope. And if you guys don't know what Child Hammer is, it's this game I'm making where you just throw a child around. I attached the ropes to the lemons and limes, but I just couldn't really get it working for a while. And I didn't really want to waste any more time, so I just went to adding a bit of juice instead. At this point, we're like halfway done with the gym. There's only like two days left, which is a little intimidating, so next I created four different lemon sizes for the lemons and limes. I did a bit of coating and now we've got lemon sizes that change. After I finished that, I thought it was time I went back to making the hands and legs, but with a different approach. Well, let's just say that didn't work out too well. I was just trying to animate them, but no, I, I, I'm not good at that. So I decided to remove the arms and legs idea completely. And by the end of the day, this is what I had. It didn't look great, but I don't think it was that bad. When I went to bed, all I could really think about was lemons. Okay, I woke up on the last day and we've only got like 15 hours before the jam is over. The game doesn't really take place anywhere right now, 
But what a better place than a kitchen. Hey, I don't know whose kitchen this is, but I'm gonna borrow it really quick. And out of that kitchen, I made this table. I also zoomed out the camera a bit to give more room in the actual game. I wanted to make this game kind of like a game with a map and levels at first, but I don't have a lot of experience with that and we only have one day left. So I figured I would just make this a high scoring game since that's pretty easy to make. I really just kind of went crazy with the juice created this dust particles when you become fat and start rolling around. The game already felt a lot better, but the area looks pretty boring. But you know that kitchen we borrowed? Well, I kind of took their kitchen light, but I changed it a bit. We can make the light kind of hang around, and you can even go on top of the light, which I think is pretty cool. I, I like doing that. We still have no gameplay loop, and the gameplay loop is very, very important. Well, what I like to do when spawning a bunch of enemies is make spawners that spawn spawners that spawn enemies. We don't really got many enemies to spawn though, except for this guy that doesn't do anything. But I did make this bomb enemy earlier that blows himself up. Now we've got a nice gameplay loop where the player can die, respawn, and enemies spawn in. If anyone's wondering what the pits are for, well, I thought it would be fun to create death pits to spice up the arena. So I put some kitchen knives in the pits because, you know, you're in a kitchen. Of course I'm gonna throw some kitchen knives in there. And just in case, I made the walls very massive in case anyone were to try to get through. And if you do get through, I added auto kill. So you'll die. It's getting late though, and we don't have a lot of time left. Only like 11 hours. I'm not sleeping. Okay, we definitely don't have enough enemies. This idea for an enemy was probably my favorite. A mama enemy that shoots out baby enemies that blow themselves up. Yeah. Okay, something that's a little important that I should probably make though is a thing that shows the player how to play. The last time I made one of these, a lot of people had a hard time reading it, or they just didn't know they were supposed to read it. Which I totally get. It looks like a guy with two brain cells made that. I don't know if it's just me, but the how to play screen looks kind of hot. Um, okay, we've almost got everything done. The only thing left really is the sound effects and music. We only have one problem though. When I plugged in the mic into the computer, the computer wouldn't detect any input from the mic for some reason. I wasn't sure if it was the computer's problem or the mic, but luckily I had my sister's laptop I could test this on. I plugged my mic into that and thankfully it worked. Now, I'm not the best at audio design, but I can usually make something that sounds good. Most of the sounds I made for the game I created with my mouth. Now, the last thing we need is music and I use Audacity for my music. But whenever I tried to record music for the game, it either sounded off or the song didn't really fit the mood of it. I don't know if it's because I haven't slept for over 24 hours or if Candy Crush was too much for me and got rid of most of my brain cells, but it was like 4.30 in the morning and I just couldn't get anything good. My brother woke up though and I was like, I need music. And then he started making this beat with his mouth, grabbed a freaking bowl and started clinking it with some markers. So we made this cool music together and afterwards my room looked like this, but I don't have time to clean. There's only like three hours left. Okay, so we have a little more time and the death pit could use a little bit of decorating. So I spiced it up with some more kitchen stuff like a chop knife, a new kitchen knife and forks. And I asked my brother, what should I add? And he said a spork and a spoon, which is pretty funny, so I did that. Now I had everything done and the game was ready to upload, but once I got the game uploaded, it was broken. I did end up getting it uploaded without the bugs, but that was until later when I found out the game was still broken. So after uploading a lot of builds, 
I finally got a working one two minutes before submissions were closed, which was super close. But then I saw this. Thankfully, I was able to fix it. And now the game was finally done. For some reason, the web version runs a lot better on my phone though, which is weird. But when you listen to what this thing sounds like, it kind of makes sense. If you guys want to play the game, I'll throw a link in the description, and if the jam is over, there should be a downloadable. I feel like I learned a lot from this jam, like, overscoping is bad. I kept wanting to give up on this game jam, and working on it was a little painful, but I can tell myself to give up, and it's kind of hard to actually give up with this stuff, at least for me. I'm really happy with the final results though and that I was actually able to finish. But anyways, if you guys liked the video then smash the like button and destroy the subscribe. Go check out me on social media too if you want to stay up to date with stuff I'm doing. Also, I'll be uploading the soundtrack on my music channel if anybody wants to listen for some reason. Well anyways, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, you guys are cool, and I'll see you later maybe.